I just bought a 2009 Corvette convertible for $4,200. Believe it or not, this is a one owner, low mileage car. The Kelly Blue Book estimated retail value of an 09 Corvette convertible in good condition, $25,000. Estimated retail value of this Corvette convertible, not $25,000. It got hit hard right here and just destroyed everything. It even bent the driver's seat. Ow! Oh, lucky for the airbag. Unlucky though, because the guy didn't have insurance. That's why it ended up here at my buddy's body shop and not the insurance auction. So the guy decided to sell the car as is to me once the body shop told him that the only way to fix this car right was to get another body. And now that I own it, that's exactly what I plan on doing. I'm going to get another body. And I might be able to do it today because there's a Corvette convertible on Facebook Marketplace right now that might be just what I need. I talked to the guy on the phone and he said the car's a theft recovery, so it's missing a lot of parts, but he says the car's never been in an accident, which is perfect. And here's the kicker. He's only asking two grand for it. More perfect. The car's in downtown LA, which is about a half an hour drive from here, and that's where I'm headed to right now before someone else buys my more perfect car. I made it to downtown LA and I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place. The guy says his family runs a tow service and a junkyard out of their house and uh, pretty sure this is it. Yeah, there's the welcoming car bench. There's the tow truck. And that's gotta be the Corvette I came here for. So, it looks like a pretty solid car. Uh, you bought it, was it, uh, what, what was with this car? It was a theft recovery or something? Yes, it was. That's what the guy that we bought it off from, that's what he had told us. When you got it, the engine was in there and everything? Yeah, it was. All right, but it wasn't running? No. Did you buy this car to part it out? What were your intentions? Uh, no, we were planning on fixing it um, and selling it for more. But oh, yeah? Yeah, it just didn't work out. I'm guessing you got this pretty cheap, am I right? For wait a minute, wait a minute, how much did you buy this thing for? 38. 3800 bucks? Yep. Wow. Okay, you buy it for 3800 bucks, take the motor out of it, it's about a $7,500 motor. You're, you're in profit already, huh? Yeah. That's kind of nice. So you're going to let me have the rest of it for pretty cheap then? Yeah. You were asking, you were asking two grand on Facebook Marketplace, would you go 16? too low um i could do 17 17 17 yeah 17 is a total fair price on this that's a good deal thank you david thing uh, let me get you paid and we'll get this loaded up and go okay all right i made it back safe and sound with my two ugly ducklings. Man, these two cars do look pretty rough. But that's the beauty of this pair. Between the two of them, there's enough good parts to make one sweet ride. And because these cars were both so rough, I was able to get all the parts I need for super cheap. I only paid a total of 5,900 bucks for both these cars.
That's why having both cars and all the parts I need is crucial to not just repairing the damage, but actually replacing all the damage. If all the parts on these two cars work properly and there's no hidden surprises along the way, I should end up with a running, driving Corvette convertible for under six grand. Under six grand. I'm liking the sound of that. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Before I go tallying up the profits just yet, I really do need to do a little testing first. You see, I bought both these cars as is with no guarantees and I wasn't able to test any moving parts. Now with this car, because there was no motor, you really can't test that much. And this one, this one was the big gamble. Because it got hit directly in the fuel tank where the fuel pump is, they weren't able to start this car because there's no fuel going to the motor to start it up and test it. So if I was gonna get the bargain price of $4,200, I had to take it as is with no testing. I kinda got a lot riding on this motor because if this motor doesn't run perfect, then this project is over. And so is the video, yeah. So if this video goes dark in a couple minutes, <laughs> you'll know what happened. Let's not think negative, no, no, no. Motor's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna get inside. I'm gonna run a little fuel to this motor. It's gonna fire it up. There's gonna be no smoking, no clickety, no clackety. Gonna sound beautiful. And then the project will continue with a big smile on my face, all right? Okay, so let me get this car inside the shop and get this project started. By this car getting hit so hard right here, it actually makes it a little easier for me because now I have easier access to the fuel system. I've taken some 3 8 fuel hose and I've tapped it directly into the main fuel line. I'm gonna use this pump from an 85 Corvette just because I had it on the shelf. It's brand new and I know it works. It doesn't put out as much fuel pressure as the 09 but I think it'll deliver enough pressure to the fuel injectors to get this thing fired up. Okay, half a tank of premium gas. Drop in the fuel pump. Oh yeah, that isn't going anywhere. All I want to do is fire this thing up. Hi. Okay, that's not a problem. I kind of figured this, it just needs to prime the fuel line. I think this is the one, here we go. Moment of truth. This bad boy is gonna fire right up. Come on, come on, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh man, that motor is Nice and quiet. No lifter noise, no rod knock. I don't want to rev it too much, but it sounds really good. I want to get that oil circulating. Oh, gotta check for smoke. Oh yeah, oh that sounds good. That's just a little bit of condensation burning off. See it disappears after a second. If it was blue smoke, that's oil. Black smoke could be fuel. This is just little gray stuff that's just condensation. This car hasn't been started in a little while, so it's just burning that off. Perfect though. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Oh man, does that sound good. <laughs> that motor sounds really good. Okay, let's see what happens when I put it in reverse. Oh 
yeah, went right into gear nice and quick. Oh, there's drive. Perfect. Transmission goes right into gear really quick. You know what that means? That means we get to go on a test drive. Yeah. <laughs> Safety first, I gotta make sure my auxiliary fuel tank is securely fastened to the vehicle. Always making sure we're fully safe here. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna need this. I'm not thinking negative, but uh, you know, you got a fire extinguisher. Okay, I'm trying to be the responsible guy in the room. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Oh yeah, the brake brakes work pretty good. Yeah, brakes work good. I don't hear anything dragging or any funny noises. This sounds actually pretty good. Oh yeah. Aside from the fact that I can't really sit in the seat too well because it's kind of collapsed. But uh, other than that, this is feeling pretty good. I think we're ready for a cruise around the block. I mean, why not? Yeah. Oh yeah, no crazy noises. This is perfect. For a car that got hit this hard, this thing drives great. Transmission shift perfect. No noises in the rear end. Torque tube sounds good. Couple of noises here and there. This drives great. <laughs> I keep getting a warning light saying my door is ajar. Now that was a test drive. I know, I know. I shouldn't have been driving this car on the street. I got a little excited. Yeah, I got a little carried away. And for the record, I do not recommend anybody do the stupid things that I do. I mean, come on people, we're a few videos in here. You should know by now that I'm not exactly playing with a full deck. That being said, man, was that a good test drive or what? Man, when I bought this car, I never even thought that I'd be able to take this thing on a test drive. I figured I'd fire up the motor and that was it. Why wow, was I surprised? Man, the motor sounds amazing. Transmission shifts perfect. Differential sounds good. The torque tube, the brakes, suspension, everything. I mean, man, that was really lucky. And now that I know that not only do I have all the parts to build a running and driving car, but I know that all those parts are working perfectly. So now the only thing standing between me and a driving car is my questionable workmanship, which I guess I need to put to the test right now. Okay, I gotta get to work. I gotta tear down this car.
the dirty work is done for now. All right. I got a good transmission, good torque tube, exhaust looks pretty good. I figured there'd be a whole lot more damage underneath this car. It was bent up pretty bad under there. I put the suspension back on the car, so now it's a rolling parts car. Makes it a lot more manageable for me. Now I got one more car I can add to the Corvette junkyard, because there's still a lot of parts on there. I have the whole front frame rails, the suspension, a whole lot of other parts. I still have to take off more parts, like I'm gonna take out the dash, the seats and everything like that, and the windshield. And the last and most important part of this interior, the wiring harness. Oh, oh man, that's a lot of wiring. Okay, I only need one more part off this car and it is crucial to my budget that I don't break it removing it from the car. And it just so happens that it is the hardest part to remove from the car without cracking it. Yeah, it's the windshield. And the one on the other car has got cracks all over it and I don't wanna fork out around 500 bucks for a new windshield, so I'm gonna need this one. And the best way to remove a windshield without cracking it is just use some music wire and a couple of pairs of vice grips, and you just saw it out. I better not crack it. I rarely crack any of these. Don't forget the safety goggles, by the way. Let's get to work. Alrighty. I used to do this with two people. You get one guy inside, one guy outside, and you just saw away. But when you got one guy, it can be done. It's a bit of an arm workout, not gonna lie. Here it comes. Oh my God. Workout. Yeah. There it is. Oh, we're at the finish line. Oh, I think I am all the way here. Oh yeah. We got it here. Let's see if I can get this thing out without busting it up. Yeah. There it is. All right. With the interior stripped out, you can now see the extent of the damage on this car. That's wrinkled up pretty bad. This is supposed to be out another foot. You can see what kind of labor it'd take to fix this because all of this has to be cut out and then cut out from another donor car and welded back in, bolted back in, glued back in because you're working with a bunch of different materials here. This is steel, this is fiberglass, this is plastic, this is aluminum, and believe it or not, the floorboards are made out of wood. Yeah, it's a little known fact that the C5s and the C6s have wooden floors. Yeah, that's balsa wood right there, sandwiched together with two sheets of fiberglass. Huh, who would have thunk it? Now that I've taken off everything I need, it's time to get rid of this wrinkled turd of a body. And bring in the beautiful body. I'm gonna pop in the motor, screw on the front end, throw in the seats, by the end of the day, I should have this thing on the road and smoking tires with it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was that good. The thing is that there's a whole lot of work left to do here. It's one thing taking a car apart. It's a whole other story putting it back together again. Or should I say a whole other video putting it back together again. When you come back, I'm going to attempt to replace this complete wiring harness out of this car. And if I'm successful in doing that, then I'm going to pop in the motor, screw on the front end, throw in the seats, and treat myself to some donuts. Tire smoking donuts, that is. 
<laughs> hey, and if you like the video, show me a little love. Hit that like button. And if you feel the need to subscribe, go ahead. It's on me. Totally free for you. See you next video.